Kentucky. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good, good morning. Uh, Senator, you call these government surveillance programs an astounding assault on the Constitution. President Obama calls them modest encroachments on privacy. Take a look. In the abstract, you can complain about Big Brother and how this is uh, uh, a potential program run amok. But when you actually look at the details, then I think we've struck the right balance. Senator, in fact, all three branches of government, the Congress, the President, and the courts, have all approved these surveillance programs. How are they then unconstitutional? Well, you know, they're looking at a billion phone calls a day, is what I read in the press, and that doesn't sound to me like a modest invasion of privacy. It sounds like an extraordinary invasion of privacy. The Fourth Amendment says that you have to look at, and you can ask for a warrant for a specific to a person, place, and the items. This is a general warrant. This is what we objected to, and what our founding fathers partly fought the revolution over, is they did not want generalized warrants where you could go from house to house with soldiers looking for things, or now from computer to computer to phone to phone without specifying who you're targeting. Well, let's look at the effects of the internet surveillance program as opposed to the phone surveillance program. In 2009, uh, we were able, the NSA was able to intercept emails between an al-Qaeda bomb maker in Pakistan, Rashid Raouf, and a man in Denver, Najibullah Zazi. As a result, they were able to stop Zazi from putting backpacks with bombs on the New York City subway system. The program, according to the government, targets foreigners on foreign soil. Would, you would stop that? My suspicion is, and a lot of this is classified, so the other side gets to promote their case and we don't get the information, but my suspicion is, is that this gentleman was targeted because they suspected him for being a terrorist. I have no problem if you have probable cause and you target people who are terrorists and you go after them and people that they're communicating with, you get another warrant. But we're talking about trolling through billions of phone records. We're not talking about going after a terrorist. I'm all for that. Get a warrant. Go after a terrorist or a murderer or a rapist. But don't troll through a billion phone records every day. That is unconstitutional. It invades our privacy. And I'm going to be seeing if I can challenge this at the Supreme Court level. I'm going to be asking all the Internet providers and all of the phone companies, ask your, co your customers to join me in a class action lawsuit. If we get 10 million Americans saying we don't want our phone records looked at, then maybe somebody will wake up and say things will change in Washington. I'm going to talk about legislation in a second, but let's talk about the practical effect of this, because defenders of the program say if you want to find the needle in the haystack, you have to have the haystack first. And here's what your fellow uh, Senate Republican Lindsey Graham has to say about you on this issue. In Rand Paul's world, you have almost no defenses against terrorists. <laughs> Uh, I would say that's an unfair characterization. I want to go after terrorists as much as anyone. For example, we are looking through so much data that I think it makes our fight against terrorism worse. The, the Sonarif boy, the, one of the Boston Marathon bombers, we didn't know that he went back to Chechnya because we're not doing enough targeted analysis. We have billions of phone calls and we can't even possibly look at all the data. You know, we have millions of audio tape hours of people and we can't go through it. They haven't gone through 25% of the audio they have. They're overwhelmed in data, so I think it's just bad police work. Why didn't we know that the Sonarif boy had gone back to Chechnya? Because we're not doing good police work because we're busy looking at the phone records of uh, regular Americans who haven't committed any crime. All right, let's, let's talk about your suggested remedy. You've talked on the one hand about a Supreme Court challenge, but you also say that you're going to introduce something called the Fourth Amendment Restoration Act. Now, of course, the Fourth Amendment to the Bill of Rights protects us against unreasonable searches and seizures. So, so try to get a little specific here. I know it's hard. How much would you restrict government surveillance as it now exists and as a practical matter, do you have any reason to believe that Congress is going to go along with you on this? 
I think the American people are with me, and I think if you talk to young people who use computers on a daily basis, they're absolutely with me. They think that your third-party records, so for example, what I spend on my visa each month, that's my business, and where I spend it, and whether I read conservative magazines, whether I subscribe to Fox News, or whether I subscribe to Yugo or, or uh, Yahoo or Google, what I do in my private life is my private life. If you suspect me of a crime, have probable cause. Over the last 30 or 40 years, we've said, once you give your records to your bank or your visa company, that they're no longer private. I disagree vehemently with that. That is, of course, we have to, we have to reverse because so much of our life now is digitalized that we have to protect it from a, a snooping government. We've now got a government that appears to target people based on their political beliefs, so I don't want my phone records being given to an administration that I can't trust. All of this, well, let's pick up on that because all of this comes at a time when President Obama is involved in, in scandals, or his administration is, the IRS targeting conservatives, the Department of Justice snooping on reporters. Do you see a pattern, do you see a connection between the scandals and these government surveillance programs? Yes, because I think it really makes people distrust their government even more when they're seeing the IRS being used to go after political opponents. But this much power is too much power to give any government. I don't care whether it's a Republican government or a Democrat government. I don't want that much power in the hands of a president. And I think it's very, very worrisome. And I think if, if the young people around this country wake up and say, enough's enough, we don't want them looking at our phone records, I think we could reverse this. When we went after the SOPA and PIPA legislation, that we thought was going to invade the due process of the Internet, people by the millions came out. If we can have that again, people by the millions coming out and saying, look, I want to be part of a class action suit that says to the government, let's hear this at the Supreme Court level. Are you allowed to look at my phone records even though there's no probable cause that I'm related to a crime? I think we'll put an end to this. Uh, I want to